Hey, this is Danny from Weird and Wired, and here are a few vintage microphones. Now, I bought a bulk load of these. There was six microphones all together being sold as spares or repairs because the person who had them had only used them for the display and they hadn't been able to test if they were working because the jacks on these microphones from the 60s, 70s, even the 80s in some cases are not very compatible by today's standards and that was exactly what I wanted to do a video about really because it's a fairly straightforward, nice, simple modification to attach a quarter inch jack or a guitar cable to this style of microphone. It is very similar to a piezo wiring where you'll have two wires, one is the signal, the other is the ground and that's it really with very basic kind of knowledge of uh, soldering you can modify these microphones to be used with guitar amps and kind of audio interfaces and unfortunately three of the microphones were absolutely short um, which left me with these three now the Foster is all original but the length of cable sticking out the back had already been cut and there wasn't really enough for me to work on it and also kind of give you a good view of what I was doing. These other two here had um, been absolutely gutted and I was absolutely gutted because those were the two which really sold me on buying all six. But I've managed to rebuild these using earpieces from telephones. So these are essentially rehoused telephone microphones. I'll show you how they all sound and some of the qualities that they have. This is a Foster DF3 dynamic microphone made in Tokyo, Japan. I love the aesthetic of this. The bass is super cool, very convenient just to have sitting ready and waiting on your desk to be used, but you can also detach it from the bass if you wanted to use it on a mic stand. In terms of how this sounds, I was totally surprised looking at this. I thought it would perhaps be from a home tape reel-to-reel -reel recorder, very kind of lo-fi, gritty, grainy quality, but it's so much clearer than I anticipated. I was really, really surprised, but I absolutely dig how this sounds. This is a Galesso Piezo Electrico made in Italy. This is such a wonderfully designed microphone. I love the look. I wish there was more microphones being built like this today. And as you can see, it is really nice and easy to hold. You can have it on a mic stand if you want. But the reason I wanted this one was to hold it so I could play harmonica. And although we don't have the original components, I have essentially made this as a rehoused telephone microphone so it still has a lo-fi gritty sound which is great for harmonica. Third and finally is this HiMic DM305 dynamic microphone. I have seen this same microphone branded under Tysco rather than HiMic, and I know Tysco more so for their super cool looking guitars. So of course, if they're gonna make a microphone, it's gonna look super cool. This gold bullet mic style, kind of like a headlamp from a bicycle, I always think, but it's again perfect for playing harmonica. I managed to rehouse a telephone microphone into this so it has this gritty lo-fi quality to it and again works well for harmonica. So there we have it, three vintage microphones that in my opinion are super cool, at least in terms of how they look for these two. As I say, this wasn't the video that I intended initially, I was hoping to do an in-depth how-to and I do still hope to do that next time I get a vintage microphone or two or six. I'll be able to kind of show you how you go about this. If you do have a Glesso Piezo Electrico or the High Mic slash Tysco DM305 microphones fully working as they should, I would love to know how they do sound. 
but you let me know what you think of all of these, which ones you like the look of the most, which ones you like the sound of the most, how would you use it, where would you use it, and until the next time, keep it weird and keep it wired. Mmm, weird and wired.